Good morning, Dan and Amy. And uh, Amy, uh, we have our uh, annual trip coming up. It's been cemented and we're yes. uh, pleased to roll it out today. What is it? Well, it's that time of year again when cold and snow in Chicago, but it's always warm and sunny in, are you ready? Drum roll. In Riviera Maya, Mexico. That's where we'll be, we will be heading in 2018 with Apple Vacations. And you're invited to come along with us. We'll be staying at this place. Are you ready? The Secrets Maroma Beach Riviera Cancun Resort and Spa in Riviera Maya, Mexico. Mm. And I know someone who won't be joining us. That's Mario Batali, who is uh, taking a leave from uh, you know Italy and his uh, restaurant empire because of Uh-oh. accusations of habitual sexual harassment. Mario Batali, the next man down. Just want to, you know. Okay, well, the plan... <laughs> Maybe he'll beat us to Riviera Maya. Right. Uh, we're uh, heading there in 2018 with Apple Vacations. You're invited to come along with us. We'll be at the Secrets Maroma Beach Riviera Cancun Restaurant and Spa in Riviera Maya. Or resort, but restaurant's fine. Did I say restaurant? Yeah, because I you're got Italy on my mind. <laughs> Resort and Spa in Riviera, Maya, Mexico, of course. Nine gourmet restaurants. That, there's the rest. There you go. Italy, not one of them. Six bars, uh, unlimited premium drinks, 24-hour room service, beautiful, unlimited luxury, adults-only resort situated on Maroma Beach, recognized as one of the world's best beaches. Get more information and book your trip by visiting 560theanswer.com slash passport. Now, the price that Apple Vacations has secured for this trip is really incredible and exclusive to us, but it's only available for a limited time because I remember a lot of my friends tried to go with us last year, but the trip was sold out. This sells out every year, so don't miss out. Enjoy a week in Riviera Maya, Mexico. With us, Dan and Amy, visit 560theanswer.com slash passport. All right, uh, switching gears. Uh, we have to do some state and local stuff. And by the way, before we get to the governor's race uh, and uh, joined by State Representative Dave McSweeney, a Republican from Barrington, Did you see this? Bob Miller. We uh, reported on Bob Miller extensively. He was the former Algonquin Township Highway Commissioner up in McHenry County. Yeah, and they made those videos because, you know, they really were bored at work, and they put them on YouTube. A family in that post for 50 years was using the the Highway Commissioner's Office in Algonquin Township in McHenry County as like a personal piggy bank for his family. $400,000 worth of salary for Miller and family members. He gets beat in... um, the primary, uh, well, the, the yeah, the, the primary election in the municipal elections earlier this year by Andrew Gosser, and thankfully so, and in no uh, small measure to our reporting at McHenryTimes.com, and is, you know, going to get paid out his pension. By the way, he's under criminal investigation, I understand, for the way that he ran the uh, Algonquin Township Highway Department. Now he's an employee of Nunda Township, also in McHenry what? County, making $40 an hour as a consultant. Oh. Yeah. 40, consulting for what? Consulting for the township. I mean, it's unbelievable. This is he Illinois. Survived. Wow. Al- he was Algonquin Township Highway Commissioner for 24 years, and his father and grandfather and great-grandfather and great-great-great-grandfather, going back to the founding of our country, basically. Um, he also, on the way out the door... Uh, purchases, including tickets to Disneyland, $47,000 payout for sick pay. Uh, I mean, it's just incredible. Edgar County Watchdogs has been on this story, too. Uh, and the, the, the suggestion is that there are law enforcement authorities looking into his conduct as Algonquin Township Highway Commissioner. What the hell is Nunda Township thinking uh, about by hiring him as a consultant at this point? I mean, it just never ends in this state, which is why people end their tenure living in this state. Uh, All right. uh, Governor's race. Uh, Bruce Rauner uh, peppered with questions last week after Jeannie Ives' announcement that she will challenge him in a Republican, the Republican for the Republican nomination for governor, Jeannie Ives, state rep from Wheaton. Um, He would not commit to debates. um, So that issue is being pressed. And then this memo that uh, surfaced on Friday. This was rather interesting. From Rahner's former general counsel, which provided uh, a lot of detailed advice and counsel on the use of state resources for political purposes. We had a couple of governors go to prison in part for using state resources for politics. And the implication is that that was ongoing in Governor Rahner's office 
or at least there was a desire for it to occur, thus necessitating this memo from uh, his former general counsel named Dennis Moroshko, who wrote this memo. It was announced that he was going to leave the end of August. He ultimately got escorted out of the Thompson Center before the end of August. It's all very curious, and the governor's office isn't saying much, so maybe we could get some inside insight from State Representative David McSweeney, Republican legislator from Barrington. Dave, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on, Dan. So why don't we start with the Moroshko memo, and why don't you tell us, as you know, state legislator now for a few terms, um, how you read that memo and every the kind of the context surrounding it. What what do we have here? On August 21st, uh, Marasco, the general counsel to the governor at that point, wrote a memo calling for complete independence of the governor's office from the political operation. On August uh, 23rd, uh, he resigned. On August 24th, the governor uh, told his staff that that was not true, that Marasco is still there. And on August 25th, he was escorted out of the building. Uh, the strange thing is there have been stories uh, that there is an EOIG investigation uh, that the administration won't confirm. You might have seen that famous clip of Marianne Ahern asking the governor multiple times uh, about the situation, and he just wouldn't answer the question, as usual, uh, with this governor. My concern uh, is that the Marasco has raised some serious issues and, and concerns. Uh, he didn't go into detail about practices in the past, and I support Jeannie Ives. Uh, call for an EOIG full uh, investigation of what the background uh, for the memo is and whether there's anything else going on in this Brasco situation. Even this morning, uh, there was a story in Politico that the administration won't answer uh, the questions. The only thing that they'll say is that he uh, resigned, which is not consistent with the uh, timeline. But this is business as usual uh, with the uh, Rauner administration, very uh, secretive, uh, not uh, providing uh, answers, and uh, that's why we need Jeannie Ives as governor, frankly. We have a governor who's not in charge of the state. He admitted it last week, and that, that's very clear to all of us who've been down in Springfield. Yeah, he's not in charge. Yeah. But, I mean, not the fact charge. that he's he, not... He told us, Amy. I know, I heard. Yeah. People in the National yeah. Guard like, well, he's not in charge. You who's in charge? At, you look like it's that a legislator like uh, Jeannie Ives who's fought for lower taxes, less spending. I know that she's going to be in charge. That's why I, I support her. And uh, in a strange way, uh, the biggest Madigan ally in Springfield is Bruce Rauner. Uh, Dan and I worked for uh, a long time uh, outside of his uh, radio job to defeat the progressive income tax. That was when there were 71 uh, Democrats that packed when was governor. We get Bruce Rauner as governor. He talks about a tax increase for two years, begging for it, calling it capital compromise. We ended up with a 30 percent increase in income tax hike. Bruce Rauner worked in hand with Madigan on making Illinois a sanctuary state. And guess who signed Madigan's uh, abortion bill, providing for taxpayer funding of abortions through the ninth month of uh, pregnancy? So Bruce Rauner is the kind of guy who uh, loves to, uh, uh, to go out and, and criticize people, call people uh, names. But uh, when push comes to shove, uh, he's been Madigan's biggest ally. And that's why we need real change in the state. Uh, and that's why Jeannie Ives will be the governor. And so uh, R Ronner is, you know, making everything him versus Madigan, right? Uh -huh. And he's uh, ultimately he'll have to address uh, Pritzker, whoever the Democrat nominee is, uh, more substantively as well. But it's, you know, him fighting the good fight against Madigan. You're suggesting that the evidence doesn't back up that claim. And there was another flap. This is a little bit below the full, but it's still important. And it, it may be illustrative of the point that you're making. This is about the chief procurement officer. Uh, to uh, monitor uh, a dealings with Medicaid services. And there was some back and forth between you and the governor's office about uh, the uh, nature of this procurement officer and, uh, and how independent this person is as it pertains to something as important as oversight of the state's Medicaid program. Steve Rauscherberger is a uh, good friend of both of ours, uh, Dan, as you know. He, he's been saying for years uh, that we need to address Medicaid spending. And he's right. That's 22 percent of the budget. Pensions are about 21 percent. If you don't address pensions, Medicaid can't uh, address the budget deficit in this state. Uh, so I have been very, very interested in following uh, this procurement process for new Medicaid uh, providers. But it's been a complete lack of uh, transparency. And specifically, uh, one of the items is that the Vermont administration hired McKinsey, a consulting firm, $12.5 million, no-bid contract. Uh, the governor on November 30th said that there was a competitive bid, even though it was outside the process. 
So I went to the hearing last week. I asked about that. Uh, the uh, head of the agency said there has been no uh, bidding, so she said the governor's information uh, was incorrect. Uh, then the governor said that the chief procurement officer who voided the contract because it was a no-bid contract is controlled by Madigan, uh, and there's absolutely no uh, evidence of that. Madigan creates a lot of problems uh, in the state, uh, no doubt about that. What I don't understand is why isn't the governor being transparent about Medicaid, about his no-bid contract? Why isn't he being uh, transparent about what his projections are for Medicaid? No numbers have been provided. That's one of the things that now they have promised. We'll see if we get them. We're going to start writing uh, letters uh, every day. But it's just another example uh, that the governor is absolutely right. Again, the, the worst Republican governor in America, according to the National Review, uh, he's not in charge. And this is just another example of it. And, and on this point, it turns out uh, Capital Facts was reporting, which is kind of like an industry uh, uh, newsletter and blog, that uh, Ronner's chief counsel in 2015 actually recommended the procurement officer, who now Ronner is suggesting is uh, controlled by Madigan. So it seems like whenever Ronner gets in trouble or is uh, shown to have said one thing and done another, or said one thing and then said the opposite thing, he just says, well, Madigan, as his kind of... Uh, as his uh, cover story, his alibi for his either, you know, change of heart or hypocrisy or incompetence. Absolutely. And it turned out that Jason Barkley, the general counsel who worked for Mitch Daniels, I wish actually uh, Bruce Rauner uh, governed like Mitch Daniels, uh, by the way, he recommended this person. So the governor clearly didn't tell the uh, truth you know, on the situation. And, you know, on the Madigan uh, issue, uh, he hasn't met with him uh, for a year. One of the things you've been saying, uh, Dan, I've followed over the years is, Madigan is just a man. Uh, he's not, he doesn't have superpowers. He doesn't, he's not smarter than anybody else. And Bruce Rauner every day makes Madigan out to be a god. He's increasing Madigan's power. Uh, and he refuses to deal with him. I think Peter Breen's letter after Rauner signed the abortion bill uh, that uh, destroyed Henry Hyde's uh, legacy, wrote probably one of the greatest documents I've ever read in politics, just took down uh, Rauner. And, and I think he's scared of Madigan, obviously. He, he, he blames him. Uh, for things, but then he won't engage with them. That's why I think Judy Ives will be a great governor. Hopefully we pick up the nine seats. That's the most important thing so we take uh, control. But if Madigan is still a uh, speaker, uh, can you imagine uh, Jeannie Ives in Madigan's office? Uh, well, Madigan's eating his apple every day for lunch. Uh, Jeannie uh, respectfully uh, but strongly advocating for what we believe in. That's what we need. We need an active governor who's not scared and intimidated by Michael Madigan. Uh, who doesn't act as Michael Madigan's agent like Bruce Rauner. Sanctuary state, tax increase, abortion on demand paid for taxpayers. That's why it's so important that uh, Jeannie wins this race. Well, and it also says a lot about him as a man and a governor if he won't debate her. I mean, that is, oh. uh, I can't even imagine. Even Todd Stroger debated, uh, was it Tony? Tony Pareka. Pareka. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you have to do that. I think that's it's a responsibility to the voters to have a debate. Well, Amy, if... Uh, Browner is intimidated by Michael Madigan. He sure is going to be intimidated uh, by Jeannie I. I mean, Jeannie's tough. I mean, that's what I like. That's why I support her. And I, and I like Jeannie because she always is straight. Uh, I don't agree with her and everything. We probably agree on 95% of the issues, but when she doesn't, uh, she'll come and talk to me and uh, we'll call and, we'll, and she'll be very, very direct about it. Browner doesn't like direct people. Uh, I think that she would absolutely destroy him. Uh, in a debate. I think that he's scared to debate Jeannie Ives. Yeah, I can tell you from my interactions with him, yeah, he, you're right. He doesn't like direct people. He just kind of sits there and says nothing. He's kind of play, likes to play Pontius Pilate uh, when there's controversy, not lead. But let me ask you this question. Yeah. It's a political question uh, because, of course, the governor's people are suggesting, look, Jeannie Ives is a fringe candidate. She can't win. I'm the inevitable nominee, and I'm the only chance we have to defeat the Democrats because I have the big checkbook. He's not saying because I have the big checkbook, but he's saying because I'm taking on Madigan, blah, blah, blah. But it's really because of the checkbook. And that's persuasive to a lot of, uh, you know, establishment Republicans who can't seem to get out of uh, the uh, the ham get off the hamster wheel of continuing to do the same things we've been doing for the last 20 years in the super minority. But but how do you respond to that? The idea that Jeannie Ives doesn't have a chance. Ronner's contention: She's a fringe candidate. She can't win. She can't win the primary. She can't win the general. Well, the fringe candidate is Bruce Rauner. Again, let me be clear: uh, He actually has destroyed, absolutely destroyed Henry Hyde's legacy. We have abortion on demand, paid for by taxpayers for the ninth month of pregnancy. Illinois is a sanctuary state. He hates uh, President Trump. He won't even say uh, his name, uh, and uh, he's responsible for the tax hike he promoted for a few years. So the fringe candidate is Bruce Rauner. He can't win a general election. He stands for nothing. 
you know, I'm a Reagan uh, guy, uh, as you know, and you need to uh, stand in what we believe. I think uh, Jeannie, as a military uh, veteran, as a conservative leader, uh, as a strong uh, person, uh, will be able to uh, stand up to uh, Pritzker and Berrios and uh, all the tax increasers. I mean, people are sick and tired, as you know, of the tax increases in this state. Jeannie will run as an anti-tax conservative who will reform this state. That is much better than a wishy-washy washy, uh, person like uh, uh, Browner, the worst Republican governor in America, who's raised taxes. They don't always sanctuary state, and we have abortion on demand through the ninth month of pregnancy. He can't win. Jeannie can't. He is State Representative David McSweeney, conservative Republican legislator from Barrington. David, thanks, as always, for joining us. Appreciate it. Great. Thank you very much. Bye. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. 